In this Wi Finance Python tutorial, I show how to use Wi Finance to download stock prices and other financial data for free. Before delving into Wi Finance, there are a few cons and pros to Wi Finance that you should be aware of. First, you cannot use Wi Finance Python module for commercial purposes, only for personal use. Second, Yahoo is notorious for changing its APIs. For this reason, Wi Finance can stop working without any prior notice. This makes it unsuitable for live trading. The pros are obvious. The financial data from Wi Finance is free. You can prototype and backtest your models as much as you like before going live. To install Wi Finance, you need to have a distribution of Python on your computer. Python can be installed on virtually any operating system you can think of. Moreover, Python comes pre installed on Linux operating systems. Wi Finance has these requirements in terms of other packages. Do not worry about them for now. Proceed with Wi Finance installation. Open your terminal on Linux or macOS or command prompt on Windows and execute the following command. If you are installing Wi Finance from the Anaconda environment, use this command instead. If any of the required packages are missing, Wi Finance will complain and stop the installation. You can always install the missing package and try installing Wi Finance again. For instance, if I am missing Pandas, I use this command. In rare instances, your installed Wi Finance is not updated and you can be stuck with an old version. First, check the most current version at GitHub by going to Wi Finance main page. Then execute the following command in the Python environment. Further, if the version you get is old, run the following command in your terminal or command prompt. Let's start working with Wi Finance. Here I use Jupyter Notebook. On your computer, you will need to create a separate Python file with py extension. So in your Python file import Wi Finance. I also import a few other packages for date and time. Every module in Python has its own help page. In case you are lost, you can always type the following in Python to get help on Wi Finance. While there is a lot to digest here, you will be using mainly two classes called Ticker and Tickers, as well as a separate standalone download function. Here they are listed in this help page. If you are not familiar with Python classes or functions, think of it this way. Python classes are templates to create objects that can contain its own functions. Once you initiate a class instance in Wi Finance, there are many things you can do with it. For instance, these include downloading prices, financial statements, stock ownership, and more. This is what we will do with ticker and tickers classes. On the other hand, functions are like one time operations. Once you execute them and get results, you have to call them again and again. This is what download function is about. So, in essence, classes let you work with functions in a more convenient way for a particular stock or stocks. Let's start with the ticker class first. Then we will move on to the tickers class and finish with a download function. First initiate a ticker class for a desired stock ticker. In my case I have Nvidia. To get stock prices, we call history function in ticker class. First we set the starting and ending dates for our price series. Y Finance accepts either a string or daytime format for dates. For instance, remember how I imported the daytime module before? Here I use it to declare my today's date and some date in the past using date and time delta functions. Next, I call the history function, which provides this price data output in the form of pandas data frame. It will contain open, high, low, close prices, volume, as well as any dividends and splits. In general, if you do not know arguments for any Y Finance function, you can always find them on GitHub. For instance, the history function takes many more arguments, which can be viewed here on GitHub. I included a link in the video description to this line of code. Here are the few most important arguments that history function takes. And by the way, they are very similar to download function we will look at later. These arguments are period for price history interval which is the size of a bar, then start and end arguments that we just covered. Start date or end date can be a string formatted as year, month and date or a date time type. Actions that allow you to download or not stock splits and dividend data. The default is true. 
pre-post which let you include or not data outside of regular trading hours. The default is false. Then auto adjust which adjust or not price for splits and dividends. The default is true. Here's important note on auto adjust argument. Because it is set to true by default in history function, all prices are adjusted for dividends and splits. On top of that, you will not get adjusted close prices. Instead, your close prices will be replaced with adjusted close prices. Let me show you what I mean by all this. For instance, if I execute a similar command and set auto adjust to false, you see that I get an adjusted prices. I also get adjusted close prices. So all prices will be on unadjusted basis except for adjusted close. As I just mentioned, you can specify an interval or bar size for the prices data. For example, you can obtain hourly, daily or monthly prices. You can even get a minute by minute prices. For instance, if you want to obtain weekly stock prices for Nvidia, execute the following command. Unfortunately, Yahoo has limits on intraday data. As you see, the restrictions are mainly for intervals below one day. There are many more functions that you can use with a ticker class. Type the following command in Python to get the full list of functions. There is this long list of functions that will let you get various information, including financial statements, dividends, institutional holdings and more. Besides these functions, there is also a list of legacy functions that have a get underscore in them. They are similar to the functions I just showed you. The only difference is that you have to include empty parentheses for functions that have get underscore in them. Here's a sample output from a few functions. The financial function produces a summary of financial statements. The earnings dates function produces dates for Nvidia earnings. Note that certain functions may not work because Yahoo Finance changed something in their API. For instance, this analyst recommendation function gives an error like so. Note, only the ticker class can download financial data such as financial statements, institutional holdings, dividend history and more. It's not possible to do so with tickers class and the standalone download function. Also, the Y Finance Python module lets you download option chains data with a ticker class. If you do not know what option chain is, it's a list of options contracts for a given asset. Unfortunately, you can obtain data for current option chain only. Expired option prices are unavailable. For instance, if I want to get prices for current put and call options for Nvidia, I execute the following commands. The first one fetches the chain option. The other two let me get calls and puts price data. Here's the result. To download stock prices for many stocks in batches, you have two options. First is to initiate a tickers class instance and use either its history or download function. The history function is similar for both tickers and ticker classes. The second option is to bypass classes and use a standalone download function. Let's start with the tickers class. First, have the desired stock tickers in a list or as one string separated by comma. Then initiate an instance for these tickers. After that, you can call history or download function to fetch historic prices. Note that tickers class uses the same standalone download function we will look at shortly. Both history and download functions have exactly the same input-output. So it doesn't matter which one you will use. Just remember that the auto-adjust and actions parameters are set to true by default in both history and download functions under the tickers class. This means that you will get adjusted prices as well as data for dividends and stock splits. As you see, the results for download and history functions are exactly the same. Additionally, tickers class lets you download news for multiple stocks at once. Here's an example. Finally, we have a standalone download function. In fact, this is the same function that the tickers class uses. The only difference is the default values. Here are the main differences. These are for auto-adjust and actions arguments. The standalone download function sets both of them to false. This means that prices are not adjusted for splits and dividends. Also splits and dividends will not be downloaded and shown under the standalone download function by default. 
In fact, we can generate exactly the same results as previously shown with this standalone download function. To do so, we need to explicitly set AutoAdjust and Actions arguments to true. As you see, the results and columns will be identical to the output from history and download functions from the tickers class. So, when you need only stock data prices, you can probably use the standalone download function. But in case you need other financial information, you can loop over instances of ticker classes. For instance, this is a quick code example of getting dividend data in a loop. This is it for this tutorial. The entire code I use here is available on my blog that I linked in the description. I hope you got something out of it, and it will help you to have a better grasp of how to use Y Finance module. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos in the future on investing and Python. Thank you for watching.